We took some of those YouTube videos to a Milwaukee psychiatrist, Ben Jordan now, going in depth, asking about red flags to look for on people's social media posts. Among Frank James' numerous social media videos. I'm moving from here in Milwaukee to at least uh, New Jersey. He shares some alarming thoughts and red flags for the world to see on YouTube, including this post from less than a month ago behind a picture of a white van. You know, since trying to get me locked up, why don't I just, get my, just, just plan to get myself locked up? But I'll plan and I'll prepare and I'll be ready for it. And I'll have a, you know, do what I have to do and just resign myself to the fact, no, no regrets, had nothing to lose, and let that be it. Simone Kilgore is a mental health counselor and trauma therapist in Milwaukee. What came to my mind was what came to my heart, which was a, a overwhelming amount of sadness, of course, for those that were harmed. Um, but for him as well. Would you see that as a cry for help? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Anytime someone's internal emotions, negative, negative emotions that are internalized spill out in terms of social media or kind of like sounding the alarm, those are warnings for folks, those of us that know the person or love the person or live near the person to say, hey, Something's going on. Simone says it's been a huge phenomenon over recent years for people struggling with mental health to share how they're feeling on social media instead of with their family, friends, and coworkers. That load can feel so heavy that they want to release it, which is normal. But if I can't get into a therapist right away, if I don't trust the idea of therapy or if there's stigma around it, if I don't have insurance or money, social media has been that for folks. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration says less than 9% of black men who experience mental health issues seek treatment, compared to about 19% of white men. Simone works with Milwaukee's Office of Violence Prevention to bring those resources into the community to address problems before they become a crisis. One of the things that we can do to reduce stigma for all people, men, women, and children, is to talk about mental well-being on a regular basis like we do everything else. Open up, share your experiences, let people know that you understand where they're at. In this case, we don't know Frank James' health history, but if you see something alarming on social media or know someone in need of help, there are all sorts of resources available, from 24-hour crisis hotlines to therapists and counselors who are just one call away. For a full list of resources, find this story on TMJ4.com. Reporting in downtown Milwaukee, Ben Jordan, TMJ4 News. Ben, thank you. As we continue to learn more details about what led to this attack, we'll bring you the latest on air and online through TMJ4.com.